A reading from Romans. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit hearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear? each of us in our own native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamph Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, that is what was spoken through the prophet of Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to John. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, 
but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. You know what? I think my wife Debbie and I might be prophets. Ten years ago at the ESCA Churchwide Assembly in Minneapolis, Debbie and I were invited to have dinner with our Synod Bishop, Julian Gordy, and other attendees from our Southeastern Synod. At that dinner, we met a young man named Kevin Strickland. He was bright and engaging and obviously hungry to understand all the ins and outs of ordained ministry. At the next couple of synod assemblies, Kevin was everywhere we looked. He was always in the middle of things, learning and leading, using his gifts and developing his skill sets. Debbie and I began to say, each time we saw Kevin in action, there's a boy who wants to be a bishop. Last weekend, to our great delight, that boy was elected to be the bishop of the Southeastern Synod for the next six years. The Holy Spirit was blowing and burning all over the place. The process of electing a bishop in our church is an interesting one, totally dependent on the Holy Spirit showing up. There are no nominees for bishop going into an assembly. The first ballot is blank, and voting members to the assembly can write down the name of any ordained pastor, active or retired, in the whole Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. It resulted in a very long list of candidates. Those of us who had already heard from the Holy Spirit that we were not being called to be a bishop could then remove our names from the list, but everyone else was on the second ballot. For me, it was clear that the Holy Spirit was moving the process and empowering the candidates to make presentations and answer questions put to them. And the Holy Spirit was gifting the rest of us with keen 
hearing and attentive minds to take in all the things that they were saying to us. From over a thousand rostered members to choose from, the field narrowed to less than 100, and then to eight, and then to three, and then to two, and then Kevin Strickland was elected bishop of the Southeastern Synod. So Debbie and I might be prophets. <laughs> Although I think we were wrong, very wrong about one thing. I don't think that we had been observing a boy who wanted to be a bishop. I think we had been observing a pastor that the Holy Spirit wanted to be our bishop. As the assembly heard from Bishop-elect Strickland over the weekend and throughout the election process, I heard two primary themes from him. First, I heard an obvious disciple of Jesus expressing a passion to tell others about Jesus and about the amazing grace of God that he has experienced in his own life. Second, I heard Kevin say that a perpetual question of his ministry is, who isn't at the table? And how can we invite and welcome them? That has Pentecost written all over it. Typically, I think of the gift of Pentecost being given to the disciples that they were able to speak in many languages they hadn't previously known. In his last conversation with the disciples, Jesus had promised them that he was going to send the Holy Spirit to them after he had died and risen and ascended into heaven. The Holy Spirit was going to teach them everything and remind them of all the things that Jesus had said and done. Their ministry was going to be a continuation of Jesus' own ministry of bringing grace and forgiveness and healing and reconciliation to all people. They wouldn't be alone and they didn't need to be afraid. The Holy Spirit was coming to them. When the day of Pentecost had come and the Holy Spirit blew into town, the disciples didn't have any trouble recognizing it. There was the sound of a violent wind and something like flames over each of their heads. And they quite suddenly and pretty miraculously could tell about Jesus and grace to all the people in Jerusalem who weren't at the table yet in their own languages. That's ultimately who the gift of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost was for and to, I think. Most Certainly, the disciples were gifted by the Holy Spirit to tell, in many languages, the good news of God's grace given to the world in Jesus. And they went on to say and do amazing things. But the real gift of Pentecost was given to those who had not yet heard the good news of God's grace given to the world in Jesus. They heard it in their own languages. 
It was very clear at our assembly last weekend, and even represented by the candidates for bishop, that the Holy Spirit is empowering us to embrace and celebrate diversity and invite everyone to the table who doesn't know Jesus. Christians gathered faithfully in the Spirit, regardless of age, race, nationality, sexual orientation, life circumstances, and physical or mental capability. Oh, wait, those words sound familiar. Oh, oh yeah, they are from our own welcome statement. That's on page two of your worship bulletin. All those diverse and faithful people gathered last weekend for the Southeastern Synod Assembly, and it was beautiful. It was also very evident that gathering so diverse a community sometimes requires new languages, different from our own. In worship, we sang wonderful songs that aren't from my tradition. We heard amazing preachers that don't preach like I do. We heard of lives and experiences that are very different from mine. We heard the Bible read in languages other than English. The Holy Spirit still gives the church the ability to speak new languages. Languages we will need to know if we are going to continually ask, who isn't at the table? Who hasn't heard the story of Jesus and God's grace? And how can we invite and welcome them? How can we welcome them all? regardless of age or race or nationality or sexual orientation or life circumstance or physical or mental capability. If we don't learn the languages of their lives and their experience. If that is our mission, as it was clearly the mission of the disciples before us and of Jesus before them, then we must pray and trust that the Holy Spirit will give us whatever language we need to give the most precious gift to those who have not yet heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.